Hey there. Welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson. That's Nathan Fox. Together, we're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. This uh, email is from Thomas. Hey, guys. Have you seen what LSAC is sending to law schools? Does this matter? A link of what a score band is and why LSAC does this is linked below. Let us know. Let us know what you think. Hmm. So this comes from um, Law School Admission Council, LSAC.org. It's a page that they have about LSAT score bands. Okay. Um, I read through it. Score bands are not unfamiliar to people, I don't think. Uh, I remember the, um, you remember like the proficiency tests that you had to take in elementary school in California over sure. the years, every year yeah. you take, to, I forget what they called it. It was like my favorite week of the year always because I just got to go do tests instead of having to listen to a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, a little insight into my brain. But uh, those score reports always did have a score band. Yep, a range, yeah. Uh, and all they're doing is acknowledging the fact that there is randomness. That, seem, yeah. that seems to be... So it says here, um, LSAT scores are estimates of a test taker's actual proficiency <laughs> in the school right. in the skills tested and they've got that in italics i don't I'm know laughing. really what they mean by actual proficiency but okay so how good you actually are at these skills sure lsat scores are reported to law schools along with a score band that's in bold because the estimate of a of proficiency provided by a given lsat score is not perfectly accurate a test taker's actual proficiency in the skills tested on the lsat may be high slightly higher or slightly lower than that reflected by the score received on an officially administered LSAT. It goes on and it gives some examples. Um, it, it says the score band indicates a range of scores, including scores slightly higher or slightly lower than the score received. The test taker's actual proficiency in the skills measured is likely to fall within this range. As an example, a score of 157 would be reported along with a score band of 154 to 160. So all they're doing is they're saying, Hey, you got a 157 and they do report the actual score, but then yep. alongside that, they also say, well, here's the score band of 154 to 160. And what that is, is 157 plus or minus three. Yep. It goes on and it talks about standard error of me measurement. It says that the standard error on the LSAT is about 2.6 scaled score points. A score band with a 68% confidence level can be constructed, blah, blah, blah. And then they say, so it's about seven points, plus or minus three and a half points. And if you, so that gives you a 68% confidence interval that your skills actually are within that band. If you double the standard deviation, then you get a 95% level of confidence uh, and you make the band twice as wide. So then it would be more like plus or minus six or seven points. <laughs> Quite a range. <laughs> <laughs> which is a wildly, yeah, that's a, that's a big range. The one thing that I noticed that was interesting here, um, the last paragraph for test takers who take the test more than once, the standard error of measurement is calcul calculated in a similar way as that described above. However, there is less measurement error associated with an average score than there is with a score earned on a single day of testing. Sure. The standard error of measurement is, is adjusted to take into account the number of scores earned by the candidate in calculating the score band for an average score, resulting in a somewhat narrower band. So, oh, interesting. So, yeah, if you take I the test five times, could you have a very narrow band? I think so. Yeah, I think the more I think the more frequently you take the test, well, the more times you take the test, the narrower that band is going to get. It would depend on your scores, though, too, right? Because one would think, yeah, if you got yeah. wildly <laughs> diverging scores, then I guess maybe the band gets wider because they're like, well, you took it, you got a 150 and then you got a 170. I don't see how that narrows the band. Yeah, but that's, that's not what they say. They say they give you an average of 160 and now they're really going to narrow in on that 160. They're like, no, oh. yeah, because they're not going to, though, because they're going to yeah. report your 170. And yeah, then they're going to report a band around that. Around that. Yeah. So I don't know if the band, it, it does seem like the band should get wider if you take it twice and get wildly diverging scores, but that's not what this page says. Anyway. Um, I mean, I get it. If you get like a 156 and then you get a 157, it's like, okay, well. Sure. Hmm. Then the band might narrow. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Someone who's uh, studied this, feel free to write in, tell us what we're missing. Yeah. If, if it's interesting, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's interesting. Like, 
What's the schools aren't going to use it, right? The schools they're, aren't going to give. They're not going to care. I mean, how can no. you care? You're you're no. you're making distinctions between a 170 applicant and a 172 applicant. The score band is going to go beyond that, and you're not going to be like, oh well, this person's score band goes to 173, so maybe they're actually no. It's too much. It's too much information to digest. Law schools don't want more numbers. They want fewer numbers. Law schools actually take your highest LSAT score. That's one number. So even if you have five scores on record, law schools take one number. That's your highest LSAT. Yep. And then they combine it with your GPA and they do this index calculation and they to turn get them those two number. things into one number. <laughs> like yeah. they don't even want your LSAT and your GPA. They just want an index number. So they definitely don't give a shit about these score bands. Um, well, this doesn't, is some... It doesn't affect the bottom line anyways, because that's not what they're reporting. So even if the sc- score band got narrower. <laughs> now, what do they report, Ben? What do law schools have to show to the world about the people who start law school with them at their school? Well, at least for U.S. law schools, it's the highest LSAT score and your undergraduate GPA. Adjusted as... by law school admission council. Yes. Yeah. Again, they report the uh, highest LSAT score. That's a single number. And the LSAC adjusted GPA, also a single yeah. number. So they report two numbers and that's for every incoming 1L. And they have I guess, to do that I guess every single year. They're free to report whatever LSAT score they want, right? But it'd be extraordinarily stupid for them to do anything <laughs> other than the highest score. Well, they report on their own websites and on their own brochures and whatever, then they publish, you know, then they report whatever they want. Yeah. Just various bullshit, but they have a standard disclosure that they have to do to the world every year. And it follows the same form at every school. And it includes the highest GPA. Actually, I guess they don't publish the individual numbers, do they? They, they publish like aggregate data. Mm-hmm. So they, they publish percentiles. So what they publish is the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile LSAT, highest LSAT, and LSAC adjusted GPA for yeah. their incoming class. And they have to report this every single year. Yep. Ain't no score bands on the 509s. Yeah. Which makes me think that there just ain't no score bands in the minds of the schools. I, you know, I, I think all this well, is, is it's I don't an even know what you would do with it. It's going to be the same for almost everyone. Three up, three down. So now you're going to settle on your. (laughs) No, it's meaningless. It's all they're doing is acknowledging that this one number carries with it some natural variance. That's all. Uncertainty, which we all knew anyway. Right. We all knew that. And it's the same, roughly the same for all students. So this is just um, Thomas is, you know, like a lawyer. He's getting all in there on the minutiae, which is great that you're reading. a very lawyerly thing to do, actually read shit. Um, so Thomas has actually read through some of this documentation, but this is really just, uh, this is technical documentation that you don't need to worry about. Yep. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you have a question or want to share some exciting LSAT or law school admissions news or unexciting. I don't know how much exciting LSAT or law school admission news there is out there, but send it our way. We'd love to talk about it. Thanks for listening.